and TV. Hmm. I'm sure many will remember him for his panache and his dapper look, his suit and the flower on his lapel. And uh, to give perspective to the life of the man and his uh, achievements, we are now joined by political commentator, Professor Masharia Munene Prof. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us. Should I say political analyst, international relations professor, and uh, as well as historian, you yourself have quite uh, the the eminent uh, career. So, Professor, what first came to mind when you heard this news that Charles Njonjo passed away at 5 a.m. this morning? Well, um, it was expected. The man has been uh, blessed by God. To live 100 years is not uh, a small thing. And uh, he's therefore uh, saw the country from the colonial times uh, to the post-colonial times, um, being there is uh, not a small achievement. Uh, he managed to become influential, a practitioner of bureaucratic infighting, and uh, he was the symbol of continuing British interest in Kenya, uh, the, actually the entrenchment of neocolonialism in Kenya was partly because of him, because he was there to protect British interest, and he did it proudly. Professor, that's not a very flattering assessment. So, the passing of Chan Jonjo is itself uh, a landmark in the, uh, the life of post-colonial Kenya that one can think about. So you say he had sort of like a checkered uh, history as Kenya's attorney general. You say he played a role in entrenching neocolonialism. As I was saying, that's not a very flattering um, assessment. If uh, we flip the coin, what uh, beneficial contribution uh, did he make Hello? In, in the transition? I believe the professor is having a hard time hearing Hello? me. Can you hear me, professor? Hello? Yes, I can hear you now. Oh, good. <laughs> Sorry about that interruption. But I was saying um, the assessment you've given so far is not flattering. Uh, so I take it he had a, a checkered uh, uh, political career. But uh, on the flip side, are there beneficial contributions he made in terms, as President Uru Kenyatta said, to our law, to our constitution? Well, he was there uh, in the initial days of independence. So all the constitutional amendments that took place, he had a role in them, a uh, primary role. Uh, some of them, uh, maybe some other forces. He was a key player. There, there, there's no question about it. In uh, Kenya's early days of independence, um, the, the post-colonial period, and that one he's remembered for. Now, the fallout with uh, President Moy was very peculiar in itself because it supposedly arose out of the attempted coup in 1982, uh, when um, one of the masterminds, uh, Raila Odinga, was asked about it. Uh, he said he wanted it a coup to stop Njonjo from having a coup. And that has laid the groundwork for him, uh, Njonjo's downfall, uh, which followed there, thereafter very quickly. All right. So what legacy then do you think he leaves behind? Well, he leaves a legacy of a person who was privileged, uh, the son of a colonial chief. Uh, there was in 1957 or so a picture of Charles Njonjo uh, by then in the state law office. Uh, the, uh, as an Africa, one of the few Africans in the area, uh, being po portrayed as a progressive Kikuyu, as opposed to the other Kikuyus who were involved in the Mau Mau. So that's part of his uh, colonial legacy. And then at independence, one of the Africanization process that took place, he was one of the beneficiaries of the Africanization process in the same way that other people are beneficiaries of the, benef of the Africanization. But he helped then to shape the office of the Attorney General to his liking, that it became synonymous with him. And since then, 
it becomes very difficult for any attorney general uh, to measure up to what Njonjo supposedly did in that office. And since he was the record keeper of uh, very interesting things, uh, he developed power that other people did not develop or could not have uh, because he could use the law. And in that sense, he developed some sort of um, uh, following of fear uh, that people were always worried about. He was very consummate. The man was very consummate. And uh, he did not mind being called the Duke of Kabeteshire. Uh, at one time, he even lamented that he was born a Kikuyu. He should have been bought, born maybe a Mzungu. He has these uh, things that people remember. But he was a gentleman. And uh, in that sense, he liked to see things done, uh, supposedly proper. Uh, a few of occasional mis here and there. But he was the, the epitome of British mannerism in Kenya. <laughs> Well, thank you for reminding me that. I had forgotten that he was indeed known as the Duke of Kabete Shire. Um, I'm curious, we, uh, we didn't hear very much from him. Um, ever, I think since the allegations that he was involved, that uh, mm. he may have been planning a coup himself. Um, why do you think that is? Well, I think he, he was advised wisely by whoever stay low, keep out of the way. Although he did try to come out uh, during the multi-party agitation with the Jaramogi Oginga Odinga who were looking for his support, monetary support. He became um, temporarily a good friend of Raila Odinga and then uh, went back. The good thing is that he tried his best to avoid uh, getting entangled in day-to-day political affairs of the country once he was out of the picture. One of the negative things one can say about him is that he really did not want to tell his story. It's, he leaves it to other people. He did not dare to write his memoirs or give a lot of interviews. He gave a few interviews to people like Jeff Koinangi and nothing else. Um, but he, he's gone to the grave, or not to the grave, to the cremation, with a lot of information that is public information, should be public property. That, uh, and that's why I think President Uhuru was uh, kind of uh, doing good when he urged people to put down their recollections, their recording. Those people who have been in positions of policy making, like Charles Njonjo, unfortunately he has gone without doing that. And he's not the only one, there are other people who should be urged to do something about it. He right. lived a long life, a privileged life, and uh, he's a memorable character in the Kenyan history.